Uh, have you heard of um, healing through uh, colours, shapes and patterns? C certainly. Yeah. Every colour. Um, and somebody was going to ask me some questions about the spirit body. So if we just talk about it for a bit. Here, imagine that's your soul and this is your body but uh, perhaps you, your head's not quite that big in proportion to the rest of it. <laughs> and, and so that's your physical body. And then your spirit body is pretty much identically overlaid over your material body most of the time, except when you go to sleep. So when you go to sleep, you go out of body. But that's in your wake state, pretty much how you look. And hopefully, like I said, the brain is a bit smaller, perhaps. But in that in that what happens is that of course you've got these intersecting energy points you're the um, if you can liken it to there's a center the soul is the center burst of energy that controls what happens to these bodies and controls this protective layer around the bodies as well now your soul um, ha have you ever seen a um, some pictures about some galaxies, that were pulsars in the in in the universe. Like they have a double toy, toroid system, where they have an energy field coming out from a central location, as sort of like two donuts. There's one donut. This is drawn on the side, and another donut sort of thing. And there's energy that flowing constantly between the pulsars. Well, our body around our body is very very similar, and. What actually happens is that there's this flow of constant flow of energy and this constant flow of energy that's going around our bodies creates intersecting points and the intersecting points are where there's high densities of energy and they're called chakras. Does that make sense to everyone? So, and we've got different chakras and you know, the, the truth is that they're the chakras in our body change as we progress in love. So um, up until quite recently there was a belief there was only seven chakras and the seven chakras corresponded to the dimensional existence of the sixth dimension but beyond there the, the other chakras begin developing because the energy system of this thyroid system changes and as a result the intersecting points change and we have more chakras but but imagine for a moment we've got the seven so so we've got one two what is it three heart four throat five um, <laughs> a bit out of scale but uh, and then this crown chakra right? and we also have them um, protruding out of the rear of our body as well as the front of course so uh, many of you would have done some pendulum work maybe and you drop put a pendulum over a body and it starts rotating have any of you tried doing that and um, that's demonstrating that the energy is flowing in a certain direction obviously if it's flowing in one direction it's working well and if it's flowing in the other direction not so well but um, you've got say those primary seven chakras where you can put the pendulum over and you'll see the pendulum swing and you'll see the energy move by seeing the pendulum move but we also have the same occurring in the rear which is also related to our intention so the front coming out of the front of our body is related to our actual state coming out of the rear of our body is related to our intention so you know what do we intend to do so this is how spirits can even see what you intend to do not just what you're doing because they, they can actually see the energy flowing in different areas now this energy flow which is flowing through your entire system with all these intersecting points I think there's uh, around I think from memory about 192 or something intersecting points for each chakra or something like that I can't remember the exact number um, but um, those intersecting points create um, high fields of energy which create vortexes flowing into your body which can you know cause us to have interactions with others now if you turn it on your side, so imagine this is your body on its side. <laughs> I'm not very good at drawing like this. So here's your arms, right, and, and your legs on, on the side, right? And, sorry about that. But uh, if we have the corresponding points, right, just uh, five, six, seven, ten, something like that. Um, if you could see that there are actually energy points coming out and in like so right 
Now, the reason why that happens is actually all related to the soul. And actually the soul's emotions and the soul's condition drives even these energy points. So, you know when you're doing healing, when you're doing healing of the spirit body, which does definitely help the spirit body to heal, what you're actually trying to do is you're trying to help these energy systems of the spirit body to move. Now, often we have other spirits connected to certain energy points based on different emotions that we have, which are harming the flow of that particular energy point. Right? And we also have, and more importantly, we have a heap of emotions from our soul. Remember, our, this is all happening within the container of the soul all affecting the different points. So for example, if I have a huge amount of grief in me that I've never experienced, I've just suppressed it, pushed it down, I've tried to stay away from it all my life, what happens is the heart chakra, the, the fourth, fourth chakra there, gets heavily suppressed. In other words, it, it won't be working very well. It will, it will actually in some places completely cease in operation it will just feel like it's all just blocked up and you'll start getting you know this is where a lot of heart attacks come from even just this whole area completely blocked up with sadness driving the, the heart attack now the soul is affecting the spirit body's chakra point so it stops it from having an energy flow in the right direction and then that affects the physical body's organs so when you do your healing and stuff, you're actually healing in most cases, you're attempting to heal the spirit body, right? And the spirit body is actually, the changes to the spirit body heals the physical body automatically. The truth is that when you heal the soul, then everything will be healed without you having to do any work at all on the bodies. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. yeah. So, so, um, if you can think of your entire system like your soul has total control over everything else. So what I've often seen is a person lays down on a table, a person work, another person, a healer, works on their spirit body, clearing all of the things on their spirit body. The person gets up, walks down the street, comes back, sighs on the table, and they had exactly the same thing that they started with before the person started healing them. And the reason why is because the soul emotion which drove the condition of the spirit body hasn't been healed and so it, it will continue to do the same thing do you think that it's possible that someone can heal the soul definitely that's what this what yeah everything that we myself and mary is speaking about is about healing the soul because that's what i used to do when yep. i did healing on people it wasn't just fix up the problem it was totally remove sadness whatever within them yep heal whatever needed healing and yep re-put however can i make a few provisos on what i've said i sure. do believe that but i but i actually feel that the only way to permanently heal the soul is for the soul to experience the emotions that are denied so in other words if i have a huge amount of block sadness in my in my chest region that comes from my soul sadness about probably it's going to be if it's in my chest probably about relationships and love and if i've got all this blocked sadness about relationships and love in my chest region the only thing in the end that's going to permanently cure that in the soul is not somebody actually removing it but actually me experiencing it for myself but, but wouldn't you think they're experiencing it by feeling the pain that they feel um in the physical pain you mean or the spiritual no, pain? the physical pain the and the spiritual pain and the emotional pain that oh. they're feeling from carrying it around yeah that's the result of the suppression of it <clears throat> my feelings are that when they actually feel it uh, which means like let's say i had all that grief I would actually cry out that grief mm. and I can be assisted to do that you know somebody who helps me spiritually can help me do that mm. and as long as I can be assisted to feel that grief then I have a chance to heal mm. but if if I'm not going to choose to personally feel that grief then I'm already shutting down the ability of anybody to help me heal mm. yeah so Mary you wanted to um, if we can just um. need to say it in the mic down I was just going to say that once we have that willingness to feel that, that grief, say yep. for example, then God can actually assist 
a healer. Yeah. Yeah. As long as that willingness exists within us, so we have the, uh, we would refer to it as humility, like we would have the willingness to experience whatever it is. If we're in that really open, willing state, then God can actually act and lessen that pain and sort of take it from us. Mm. But we have to be in the right state of faith and openness first. To feel it. Does that so, make sense? So if yeah. a person is shut down to feeling it and then they come along to you and say, can you help me please feel it? But really they don't want to feel it then they're not going to finish up healing. But if they're in an open state going, I want to feel this, I want to actually get through this emotion, th at that point God has a lot of ability then to, through, even through another person, to actually help the person heal. Yeah.